Uh, what's going on guys uh, welcome back to this channel that's all about architecture engineering and construction okay and where we're all about um, bettering the African narrative so uh, all of us at some point in our lives fancy to have either our dream houses our dream homes or to set up structures uh, so it's our role as architects and engineers um, to be able to explain to you uh, the different choices of things that are available on the market to explain to you the, the advantages and the disadvantages, the pros and cons of different things, so that by the time you make your decisions, um, you make your decision from actually an informed point of view, so that you do not blunder and regret something uh, at the end of the day when you when you you know when you can't take it back or something. Yeah. Um. So today we are going to be talking about our finishing of houses, and we are going to focus on painting. Okay. Yeah. So today I'm going to be explaining to you the different. Um, the different options the different options that are available at least on the market the most common ones uh, when it comes to painting of houses and finishing of houses uh, of course i'm talking about mainly the exterior uh, because the, the interior painting is usually pretty much straightforward um, after the plastering you add a thin layer of, that is mixed with uh, cement and lime okay so that you achieve that smooth finish on the walls uh, then later you can choose whatever paint you want you choose silk vena you choose super gloss whatever depending on your uh, budget as well as your preference okay for whichever rooms you would want to paint yeah so today our focus is mainly on the exterior walls um, so I'm going to be explaining to you the different types of uh, exterior uh, exterior wall finishes uh, of course in terms of paint eh? uh, we've listed down mainly four uh, types of uh, finishing of these exterior walls uh, so I'm going to start with the least costly and then I'll go onward to the one that is perceived to be at least the most expensive. Though at the end of this video you might actually realize that what is perceived to be the most expensive might actually turn out to be the least expensive uh, at least in the long run in, in 10, 15 years, 20 years. You realize it's actually the least uh, expensive of all these other options. Uh, anyway, without using much time, I'll just head right into it. Okay. So um, firstly, we have this uh, this most common type of paint uh, basically after you've done the plastering of the exterior walls you just apply a uh, undercoat and then you apply uh, your desired color of paint and type of paint usually weather guard paint is uh, is good for the exterior yeah of course this is the most preferred uh, this is the most preferred because uh, it's uh, extremely really really cheap it's extremely really affordable when you want to close your house as soon as possible and just get in but um, after about three years, two years, five years, you might need to have to repaint uh, the house. Of course, this depends on where you're located. If you have a lot of infants playing around the house and they're scratching the walls, or you are located in a dusty environment, probably near to the road, uh, you might need to be more, you, you might need to repaint more often than most of these other options that I'm going to be giving you. Okay, but it's uh, the cheapest. Uh, then uh, so the second one is using rough cast uh, so after you've done the plastering you apply the rough cast okay now after applying this rough cast you do the painting as well so now this one is uh, at least more durable than the former than the former that I, that, that I earlier on discussed um, just that it, it's kind of old-fashioned so many people don't like to use it anymore uh, but it's more durable and it's a, it's a bit more costly than uh, the former because this one after you've done the plastering you have to add some rough cast which is actually a mixture of cement and little sand and water as well okay yes uh, then uh, so the third option is actually a modern version of the rough cast okay so after this after you've done the rough cast while it's still wet it hasn't hardened it hasn't set uh, you can choose to pass on a hard steel float or you can pass on a wooden float and flatten those ridges okay so that you achieve something that is a bit out of the ordinary okay and then later on you can add your preferred uh, paint uh, whatever it is usually weather guard for exterior walls uh, the reason why many people usually like this style of this style of finish is because uh, it kind of mimics it kind of uh, masquerades it kind of um, disguises to look like pest like the, the the kind of disguises to look like pest yeah so uh, that's why many people really love it. Uh, it, it it looks fine at least for many people and it's not as expensive but of course uh, it's uh, it's not as durable as the the fourth option that i'm going to be mentioning for you but this one also works of course after about three years two years uh, four years depending on where you're located 
and also depending on the exposure conditions I'm talking about the intensity of the rain I'm talking about the, the intensity of the sun I'm talking about uh, vandalism as well yeah uh, so the fourth one is uh, one that is actually perceived to be the most expensive uh, yet um, in the long run it's not really that expensive because using pest to, to do these walls uh, it gives you a variety of options in terms of uh, in terms of the rough the, the design of the rough cast you want to put you could put sidings you could put rollings you could make the sidings vertical you could make them horizontal you could put them at an angle uh, depending on what you really actually prefer um, now the way this style of finishing works is that after you've done the basic plastering there is a thick layer of, of paste that is added to the wall uh, it's usually about 1.5 millimeters to 2.5 millimeters uh, so this layer of paste is actually mixed with paint of your desired color with of course with also some small stones um, the, these small stones are actually the ones that determine the thickness of the paste that you're actually going to apply to the wall so it it kind of provides a very thick layer of uh, paint uh, that that causes the wall to withstand really harsh environmental conditions for really a considerable amount of time you could spend even 15 years 20 years 25 years without even having to repaint and the other advantage that it has is that um even if it gets dirty it's easy to wash okay you'll just you'll just wash off the dust or you wash off whatever is there so it makes this uh, style of finishing really kind of stand out from the rest of them it's becoming really common it's becoming really common uh, for those who really are after quality um of course with of course even with sand with bigger grains of sand this texture can be achieved and you could also choose to to paint over it so that it can mimic or it can actually look like paste but the durability will not be transferred to this to, to this system of using uh, of using uh, sand okay uh, so you uh, so you find out that if you actually decided to use paste you might be spending about three th about three times more than someone who just decided to paint the house okay because for example you realize you find that a bucket a bucket of paste will be costing between a hundred and fifty thousand to two hundred and twenty thousand uh, that is depending on the manufacturer okay and that is also depending on the color that you choose because colors come with different prices usually the darker the color the more expensive the paste is actually going to be yeah so you find that this one bucket of paste is going to take you about between six to nine square meters of course that is depending on the gauge or the thickness that you decide to apply to the wall so roughly you realize that uh, this paste is not really uh, it's not really cheap it's it's quite expensive compared to this other ordinary method of, of, um, of finishing the house but of course you realize that in the long run it's going to save you a lot of those um, those overhead expenses that you spend in repainting the house um, even the labor charges for best of course cannot be the same as uh, those of paint okay so it will cost you more in labor also in terms of um, doing best than when you just than than if you decided to just paint the house okay um uh, of course if you haven't done proper waterproofing from the foundation right from the very construction stage um your house will not be exempted from peeling only that it will happen over a long after a long period of time uh, so this style of finishing is also usually most um more resistible to to peeling of walls than all the other ones we've mentioned uh, because um, a lot of activity will happen under the surface of that court and it will not actually be depicted on the outside of the building okay so it will take really a long time for the walls to peel but it's always best to do proper waterproofing when you are doing the foundations and you're doing the ground slab so that when you apply this paste you literally have closed off what is called construction and you won't need to be spending again on the house probably in um probably in 20 years 30 years time okay yes uh, otherwise guys i hope you found this helpful i hope this help i hope this helps you to make the right choice when it comes to finishing your house uh there is more that we have to discuss uh, we're just limited by time sometimes but um but i hope you enjoyed i hope you learn uh, feel free to comment and ask whatever you want to we'll get some time and respond to your comments and see what we can do next for you otherwise thank you very much guys for watching and have a good time